Hello, welcome to another episode of Crosstalk. My name is Kevin Tachi, and I will be your host for this segment. As we do with this particular show, the idea is to better educate, inform, enlighten you about uh, many of the things that are going on in and around the community. Topics may vary, whether it's upcoming events, community issues, local politics, it runs the gamut. Today, and uh, some of the other interviews you'll probably see in the coming weeks. As we lead up to the general election on November 8th, we talk with the candidates who are running for office, whether it's uh, local races for county government or even for state office. Today, we are joined by Emmanuel Doctor. He is a candidate for the 5th Plymouth District. Now, I know at home, you're all saying, wait, He's not a candidate. I, Hanson is in the fifth. Ah, but a precinct is, if I'm correct. So we welcome you to the show. Thank you, Kevin. Good to be uh, here. For folks who don't know, who, if this is news to them, mm. that uh, a part of Hanson is going to be a part of the fifth Plymouth district, which was it used to be Rockland, Norwell, and Hanover. Right, right. right? A little bit of a change because of redistricting. Right. Right, yeah, so with the redistricting, there was a, basically a shift. Lost one precinct in Norwell, added one precinct in Hanson. So if you are in precinct one in Hanson, I hope to be your next state rep. So for folks who are maybe seeing you for the first time, or maybe they've seen you around and have been hoping to catch up with you or want to learn more about you, this is the opportunity for folks to learn more. So tell us a little bit about yourself. Yeah, let me, let me first say that if you want to learn more about me, give me a call. My cell phone is 781-312-9832, and I'll get coffee with you, I'll sit down, I'll answer any question that you, that you want to ask, and we could step through. Uh, I live in Hanover, I'm very committed to the community, I live with my wife, Heidi. Our anniversary is actually today, happy anniversary, sweetheart, 13, 13 wonderful years, lucky 13. Um, we, uh, we have three wonderful kids, Abby is 10, Henry is 8, and Ethan is 5. Um, I've been involved in Hanover pretty much uh, since I moved here. We moved here in 2012 to raise our family. So I've been chair of the advisory committee, chair of the select board, chair of the master plan committee, chair of the master plan implementation committee. Been very involved in community service locally, with the food pantry, with other organizations. Um, and, and I'm running for office because I really feel like we need a state rep who's focusing on our local issues and our local needs. What do you feel of some of the key issues that will that Hanson residents or residents in the new fifth Plymouth district are it's going to resonate with them yeah and I'd say it's, it's it's pretty similar throughout the district you know there are some differences from town to town but pretty much across the board I've been door knocking since December 1st and I hear the same thing which is development and development means a few different things different people so you have economic development which is a huge issue mm -hmm. here in Hanson um, you have you have uh, infrastructure development right our roads our bridges our water, water has been a huge issue. Pretty much every door I go to, water comes up in some way or another, whether it's water quality, whether it's water quantity, water's a concern. Um, so, and then, and then we have housing, right? Housing development and making sure that we do it in a thoughtful way that it balances out the needs and the interest of the people who are living right now in our district and those who we would like to move, move here into the district. As a representative, how can you make any of this stuff happen? How can you be a leading voice when it comes to economic development, when it comes to ideas for new water sources, when it comes to uh, uh, any kind of development that is important to the voter? I like to say that politics is all about relationships. I think unfortunately right now in our society, in our country, when we think about politics, we think big. And it's, and it's important to think big from time to time. Um, but when you ask someone their view on politics, they say Republican, Democrat, they think about political parties, they think about big conversations that are being held nationally. They don't think so much about the immediate. And when I think about the immediate, when I think about what Tip O'Neill said, that all politics is local, it's addressing the local issues and it's building effective local relationships, local partnerships. You know, when, when you're on the planning board and you're talking with the town planner and the town administrator and you're saying, we have this challenge coming up, uh, how are we going to address it? I want you to think, let's give our state rep a call. Let's give our state rep a call and see how that person can help us. I've been in those rooms, in those conversations in Hanover, 
And I know that we could have a more effective partner. And that's really going to be my main focus, is being an effective partner, developing those relationships up at the State House, but then also here locally. Because the state rep position is a unique position in politics. You're local enough, right? It's not like a U.S. Senator. You're local enough where you can have those local relationships and actually be involved with people locally. But then you also have the connection up to the State House. You have the ability to walk into the, the head of a department and say, listen, I have an issue here locally that I need you to focus on. Let's talk a, a little bit about uh, your record, things that you've done uh, serving for a municipality. Share some of your successes or some of the things that you've been involved in that folks can identify with. Thanks. You know, one thing I'm extraordinarily proud of is I started in Hanover on the advisory committee. It's called the Finance Committee in, in other towns. Basically, um, locally, we have a form of government, town meeting form of government, where residents can come and they vote on the entire operating budget. They vote on the entire capital expenditures. It can be very complicated. So the advisory committee, the finance committee, they dig into every single part of the budget, every capital request. When I got on the advisory committee in Hanover, there were um, a number of different times when presentations were made and said, you know, we've had some requests for money in the past, this is what we requested, this is what we spent, but it was difficult to make some actual comparisons. I asked uh, for a while to just get a history of what we actually spent over time, and I wasn't able to get it. So eventually I just did the work myself. And I went through, I recreated, line by line, 10 years of actual budgets and spending. And through that work, we were able to identify different line items that we could reduce, that we could adjust. We were able to do this thing that everyone talks about, which is reducing the actual revenue coming in, right? Making some cuts, saving people money, and then at the same time, stabilizing and, and making sure we had the level of services that we need for the residents. I'm very proud of that. And I think in the economic moment we're in right now, that's what we need. Right? We need to make sure we're providing the services we need to provide, but we need to provide them in an effective and efficient way, and that's what I plan to do when I get up there at the State House. How important, you talk about relationships, uh, how important do you feel is it when it comes to constituent services? Constituent services is so important. It's important to be available, which is why I gave my cell phone number out at the beginning here, um, responsive. So if someone calls you, actually getting back to them, meeting with them. Um, I've had a number of people who have reached out to me just as a candidate, frankly, and they say, listen, I know you're not the rep yet, but um, I have an issue I, I need your help with. I'll give you a perfect example. Someone reached out to me um, about a month and a half ago, and they live, they live in my district, but they have a business outside the district. And they said, listen, I know you're, you're talking about being available and helping. I'm kind of at a wit's end. I'm building out this, this business and, and this building. And I need someone just to turn off the gas. And I can't do it. And the town can't do it. But I just need, I believe it was National Grid, to come and just turn off the gas. And it's been months. And my construction schedule is running behind. And we're getting overages because of this. And I don't know what to do. And I said, you know what, let me see what I can do. And I got on the phone and I called a number of different people who I have existing relationships with. And short story is that a few days later, someone came, turned off the gas. That is what needs to happen. When someone reaches out to you as a constituent, it's listening to them, but then it's being able to have the other relationships that you can leverage to actually get something done to help that individual. I'm sure you're a student of, of politics, especially things that happen here on the South Shore. Uh, talk to me about the legislative delegation that is the South Shore, whether it's state senate or state representative, how the group of individuals, even though they may not necessarily, it may not be an issue that's affecting their, their community, work together to get the job done. How important is that if you're elected to be a part of that legislative de delegation, that team from here on the South Shore, regardless of your party, party, affili uh, uh, party affiliation. Yeah, absolutely. And these are relationships that I've developed before I even thought about running for state representative, because being a selectman in my town, it's important to have those connections and being able to reach out to someone um, who's, who's able to help. Um, one of the reasons I did decide to run is I was looking at the services and the relationships and what was being able to offer by other state reps um, that I needed to connect with to get some things done locally. You know, but I can say that in Hanson, um, I'm hopefully going to be sharing this town with Josh Cutler. 
um, and I've been very impressed with Josh and the work that he's done um, in the area. Uh, Joe Moschino is someone I know very well and gotten to know. I'm very impressed with, with how she has dug in on issues and she's really been an expert on some local issues. Kathy Lenatra, um, Pat Kearney. I mean, I can go down the list. These are people who I've tried to build relationships with because at the end of the day, you know, everyone's going to show up theoretically and say, I want more money for my district. I want more projects to come back. And there's 160 state reps. So to get 159 other reps to go along with you, you really need to have a relationship. You need to have a give and take. You need to be able to get something done across the region, across the board to get other people involved. What's your thought on transportation? We've talked water, we've talked development, we've talked how you've mentioned housing. Let's talk uh, transportation. Let's talk about transportation infrastructure because at the end of the day, what a lot of voters care about is, is if my community gets chapter 90 money, are they gonna be paving my road? Am I gonna get new sidewalks? Whatever the monies is. Talk to me about the importance of being an advocate for local aid and transportation specifically. Yeah, transportation is a real challenge. And I'll tell you that um, I have a small business in Norwell. Um, I used to have a small business in Boston and I moved down to Norwell because the commute was just horrible. You know, you're talking about an hour and a half, this is pre-COVID, each way. Um, and you're just stuck, you're stuck in your car, right? A lot of people move down here or stay here to raise their families and they're finding that instead of spending time with my family, I'm spending time with other drivers uh, in, in the car. So we need to do something about that. We absolutely need to do some of that from, from so many different avenues. And I'll say I've been talking to the small business community locally and one of the challenges that they're having is staffing. And they're saying, listen, for someone to work, right? For me to be able to hire someone to have them work um, in my business, they either need to live here or they need to be able to get here through transportation. And we, we are having a challenge on both of those, on both of those issues. Um, I can say that um, in Hanover especially, uh, and, and, and also uh, parts of Hanson, where I've been going through door knocking, um, people are looking at sidewalks. People are looking at sidewalks from a safety concern. Um, I should also say, we want to protect these politicians who are going door to door on all these streets without any sidewalks. It's dangerous out there. Um, but, but seriously, transportation, the basic infrastructure here locally is something we need to be investing in. Um, if we get that funding uh, from the state, I want to make sure that I, as a rep, am going to be able to advocate as much as possible to bring it back. One thing for, for Chapter 90, it's just a straight formula. But one thing that I want to do if I get in there is to try to shift the formula because um, the formula involves the, the number of miles of roadway, the number of people who live in your town, and the number of people who work in your town. And we all know, since COVID, more people are working from home. So more people are here during, during the day using our roads, but we're not getting any more money under that formula. So that's one thing that I want to advocate for, is to shift the formula so that we here in this district are getting more of our fair share. Being a parent of young children, I'm sure you're somebody who cares very much about um, education. Talk to me about where you stand on education and is the state doing enough to provide uh, the educational system here in the Commonwealth everything it needs to be successful so that our future leaders are you know better educated than we were and our grandparents and so on. Yeah it's a it's, it's a huge priority of mine both of my um, wife's parents are retired uh, public school teachers. Um, it's, it's a basic investment that we need to be making in our communities. Um, specific, well, and the specific answer is no. The state's not doing what it needs to be doing. It's not. Um, there's something called the circuit breaker. Um, and what the circuit breaker is, is that if you have excess, fund, uh, excess expenses uh, to meet, uh, the state requires that every school um, meets a minimum standard, right, uh, of services for every student who comes in. And if you have a student who needs more services than another student, it costs money. Um, even though there's that obligation here locally, we don't have the funding. We get some of the funding back through a circuit breaker, but it's only about 30%. Um, and there was some recent um, information that came out from the auditor's office that I believe we're, we're looking at a, about $700 million of unfunded mandates through, through that requirement specifically. When I was on the advisory committee and on the select board in Hanover, when we had to go through and do the budget every year, there was always this unknown, this variable on the school side 
we don't know what's going to happen with these services that come up. It could be an extra three, four, five hundred thousand dollars plus that just happens at the last minute that we're not able to repair for. The state needs to be covering that entire mandate so that we locally can plan long term. Planning is so important. It's so important that we look not just year to year, but we look at the next 5, 10, 15, 20 years. Where do we want to be? What do we want our school to look like? What do we want our community to look like? And it starts with making sure we have consistent financial funding from the state. Let's, let's talk a little bit about if you are successful on November 8th, the general election day, um, you have your choice of committees that you can serve on. What do you feel that you could do the most good when it comes to various committees, if the opportunity so happens to present itself. I, I, I have not put as much thought into those specific assignments, but I will say uh, ways and means, you know, I absolutely want to be involved in that committee. That's a committee where pretty much everything flows through. Mm -hmm. So I want to be in the know of what's happening and where I can make a difference. Transportation. Transportation is a huge challenge for this area right down here in the South Shore. I want to be involved there. Um, I'm also really interested in uh, workforce development. Um, you know, the current rep in Hanson is chair uh, of that committee, and I think it's something that we need to be thinking about what the future is, mm. what the future of work is, especially with COVID, with so many people working from home, with things changing, um, with one of the biggest challenges in our communities being finding uh, work for the employee, but then the employer finding employees and matching that up. Um, we need to uh, be looking at that long term. So I'd say those three are, are the top of my list, um, but, but I'd be open to help wherever as long as it's going to be helping my district. As we have a few minutes left here in our conversation, uh, I do my best usually at the end of our discussion to offer an open-ended question. And so maybe there's something we haven't touched upon or discussed. You want to take a moment to at least, or maybe we've talked about it, but you maybe you might want to say a little bit more on the subject matter. Is there something we haven't discussed here today, but you want to take a moment to at least uh, talk about, or something we did talk about, but you want to reaffirm yourself? Yeah, we talked a little bit about it, but I, but I, but I want to reiterate kind of what politics is. Um, uh, we had, you and I had talked before and you had asked me, you know, what are you hearing on the doors, mm. right? When you're out there talking to people and for so many people, the first question is, are you a Republican or are you a Democrat? And I just, I really want to reiterate to everyone at home that a state rep's position is local. A state rep is the person who can get things done. And it doesn't matter what the letter is after their name. It doesn't matter if they would vote the same way with you for president um, or, or for U.S. Senate or for anything else. Um, it matters that they're going to actually get things done. And I, I think in this race, we have a benefit that um, we have an actual choice. You know, so many legislative races in this state, you, you don't have a choice. You know, I think it was what, two thirds or 75% of all the races right now in the general election um, are, uh, there's no competition in the general. Um, we have a choice. There's one person who's been in office for eight years and we know what that person has done because he has a record. Um, and then I as well have a record of what I have tried to do. So if, if you do not know what the person who has been in office has been able to do in those eight years, look into it because I try to provide that information. If you don't know what I have done and what my priorities are, look into it, give me a call, I'll talk with you. You know, one thing that I try to stress is that when you're speaking with a politician, if they have an answer for every single thing that you ask, if they have the solution, right, guaranteed that's gonna fix everything, you might wanna just question whether they're giving you, you know, the full truth, um, giving you straight answers, because there are tough issues out there, real challenges that we need to address. And I'm not gonna sit here and say, I can solve everything on day one, I know the way to fix it all. But what I can say is that I have your priorities at heart if you live in this district because I am that person who lives in this district, who's raising their family in the district, who is running a business in this district. I understand what people's priorities are and their issues and what they want me to be focusing and spending my time on. And if folks want to find out more about your campaign, I know you already gave out your phone number, yep. but any other information that you want to share with them, now is the time to, get, to give it to them. Sure, my website is votedoctor.com and it's spelled a little bit differently, it's V-O-T-E D-O-C-K-T-E-R.com. All my social media is Vote Doctor. 
um, at Vote Doctor. My email is doctor at votedoctor.com. And again, my personal cell phone that I will answer is 781-312-9832. Try me, try me. Give me a call, I'll answer. I will talk through anything. I want to thank you very much for joining me and, and be, uh, having a, a great uh, conversation. And I want to thank you at home for tuning into programs like this to be better informed when it comes to making your choices come the general election on November 8th. Until our next conversation, have a great day.